I was about to say like, oh, I got my basket, you know what we're doing then, but you don't because you see this basket all the time. It's just like my little workhorse basket. So, hello, thanks for coming back to check out another video. So, we are here today to rank all of my powdered highlighters. I am super excited about this. Now, in the month of January, I already ranked my foundations in case you're curious. So I thought it was time to do powdered highlighters. I think next up would be powdered blushes. Also, this month, uh, it's February. So every Friday in February has been a swatch party. So I will make sure to link down below the video of me swatching out all of my highlighters. I am going to include swatch clips in this too, but just in case you wanna go and like see that, cause I tried to do them more by brand and color family rather than in a ranking order. So just in case. Um, so yeah, I don't know who like started this trend of ranking my makeup, but I'm here for it. I feel like it was much like a much bigger hit in like 2020, 2021 ish, but I never got around to do it and I want to add my two cents in. So if you are interested to see how I would rank all of my powder highlighters in my collection, then you just keep on watching. I'm going to do a fade because I need to get my life in order just a little bit better. All right, so I know myself, I will probably lose count. I have 14 powdered highlighters, so I will leave like the number and the name and everything like that on the screen for you guys. So if I say the wrong number, what's on the screen is the right number. Um, so we're gonna start from bottom and go all the way to the top. So at coming in at number 14, it kind of breaks my heart. I used to say that this was one of my favorite highlighters and technically it still is. None of my highlighters are bad. None of them are where it's like, oh, I don't really like this. Like I'm on the fence about decluttering it. Like I really do love all of them. It's just right now I am more into poppy colored highlighters, especially my pink ones. Um, but not like so much icy highlighters and we'll get into that with some other ones. But so coming in at number 14 is the balm Mary luminizer that I have. So this is what this one is currently looking like. It is so pretty. It's just a very soft golden highlighter. It is not intense. It is not like in your face. If that is something that you are into, then I would definitely recommend checking out the balm highlighters. Well, especially Mary Luminizer. I can't really speak to the other highlighters from the balm because this is the only highlighter that I have from them but it is just a very nice like subtle effect on your face and that used to be what i was all about and then i don't know whatever happened 2022 new year new me i guess i've just been all about my pinky colorful highlighters and so that is why this one is just unfortunately coming in last because it is my least like impactful highlighter all right so coming in at number 13 this is from the abh sugar glow kit so this is the shade Butterscotch. This is what this is looking like. This is a really good formula. I really enjoy the ABH highlighters. This was my first experience with them. Laura sweetly gifted me the Sugar Glow Kit and I've gotten a lot of good use out of it. I've had a lot of fun with it. This shade though is just a little bit too dark for me. I'm curious to try it out in the summer to see if it like works a little bit better that way. But since it is too dark, like for right now, if I wanted to use it, I have to go in with such a light hand Hand. and even with going in like with a very light hand I feel like sometimes it does still give me that like cast where you can see that your highlighter is a little bit too dark so that's really the only reason that this one is coming in so far down all right so I think we are on number 12 if I am not mistaken so this is a highlighter from Nabla they call their highlighters their skin glazing actually I think their whole line is called skin glazing like the bronzers blushes and the highlighters but this is the highlighter in the shade Ozone. So this is really pretty. The formula is very nice on this. It's just that this highlighter in particular is super icy, super like blinding in your face. And like I mentioned earlier when I was talking about the Balm Mary Luminizer, just I'm, I want more impactful highlighters than what Mary offers me. But I don't want these icy white highlighters like what this is, this ozone shade. So while it is really pretty and the formula is very nice, I'm not looking to like declutter this highlighter. I'm sure that I will go back to liking these types of highlighters because I do like I would say usually in the winter time, the kind of highlighter that I am reaching for is more on this like icy shade like this one. But just for right now, whatever it is, my tastes have changed. So this one just isn't like a tip top favorite. 
So kind of along that same vein as the Nabla Ozone, I have to put my Becca Vanilla Quartz in at this position. And again, much like Mary Luminizer, this was a highlighter where if you would have asked me like this time last year, this probably would have been like, oh, this is one of my favorites. You can see hopefully that I do have pan on this. But like with that ozone shade, this one is just far too icy for my liking right now. The reason this one comes in at like one position above the ozone, even though I like the formula of the Nabla highlighters better than this Becca one, the Becca one isn't as icy as the ozone one. So that was kind of my like rationale for putting them the way that I did. But yeah, it's still like a really pretty highlighter. I mean, I guess there's no point in really saying that because Becca is not even a thing anymore, right? So let's just move on then. All right, so our next highlighter is going to come from my Udenza Solmana palette. So this one, like with the ABH one, these pans are magnetic, so I can kind of like pop them out and just show them to you individually, but I can't with this palette. So the shade that is coming in dead last for like as far as this palette goes is this shade right here. It would be the Mana shade. So again, this formula is very nice from Uden's Eye. I really have enjoyed it. It's just with this particular shade, it is like a white based highlighter with a kind of lime greeny gold flip. And I'm just not really that into it. I would like to try maybe using it more this summer. I don't know why, but I feel like maybe in the summer I would be much more inclined to wear it. I'm curious to like try and mix it with this top peachy shade that from the palette. But yeah, it's just the shade. I think you can very much tell when I bring the palette in pretty close. You can see a lot of wear on the rest of the shades in the palette except for that one. Like its name is basically still pretty fresh looking compared to the other ones. So it's just my least used out of this palette. It's my least like, it's the one that I never really want to reach for. I just don't think it looks right, but it does come in a little bit higher than some of these other highlighters because it is impactful. You know, it's not icy. Like it's not, I would rather wear this than some of these other like lower ranking highlighters. All right, so we are gonna go back into the ABH Sugar Glow Palette. So I picked Marshmallow is coming in at this position. This is really funny to me because when I was like looking at this palette online, I always thought that Marshmallow would be my favorite shade from this palette. And it's not a bad shade, like I actually do really like it. It's just one of those shades where I feel like I have this type of like golden kind of highlighter represented so often in my collection. And as far as golden ones go, this one is a little bit more on the like icy golden side rather than some of my other ones that maybe lean a bit more like peachy golden. So while it is still pretty and still very lovely and I do enjoy wearing it, I just have other highlighters within that golden family that I enjoy just a little bit more. Speaking of golden highlighters that I enjoy just a little bit more, we're gonna go back into the Uden's Eye palette. Hopefully it's not too washed out. I'm still fooling with like camera settings and figuring this out, so bear with me. But the shade that's coming in next is this top shade, this peachy golden shade. It is a really pretty shade. I actually really like, enjoy, like I really enjoy wearing it. I love it on its own. I love it mixed with the soul shade down here, the pink one. It's just a really versatile shade. It's very much like Mary Luminizer, just more impactful. So I've really gotten a lot of use out of this. I feel like this is a shade that I will reach for more in like the summertime months rather than right now in the winter. Um, but I do have one other peachy highlighter that we'll get to that I like just a little bit better. We are just jumping back and forth between the ABH Sugar Glow Kit and the Uden's Eye Palette. So the next highlighter that I would like to rank would be Gumdrop from the Sugar Glow Kit. So this is a darker pink highlighter. This is really pretty. And I know like the depth of this looks like it would be on par with that butterscotch shade. But I feel like since this is a more pinky highlighter, if I go a little too ham with it, it almost just looks like a blush topper. Like I've brought like my blush topper a little bit higher up than you like normally would. Does that make sense? So I feel like I can get away with this, even though this is a darker highlighter. And like I said, just right now, whatever it is, I'm absolutely loving my pinky highlighters. I cannot get enough of them. I have enough of them, obviously, but I can't get enough of them. I've just enjoyed wearing them day in and day out. So yeah, this is where Gumdrop would rank. 
I don't know why I'm saying like this is where it would rank as if this is like a hypothetical situation. Like we're here, we're doing it, we're ranking highlighters. You know what I mean? So coming in at number six, I believe, if I have been keeping count. So we're almost to the top five. This is the Natasha Denona Diamond Powder, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so this came in like a little mini duo at some point, maybe in 2019, if I'm not mistaken. I depotted it forever and a day ago, so I really don't have that much like information to give you. I do know it is from Natasha Denona, but that's about as it like as far as my info goes. So I'm very sorry, but I have it in my collection, so I'm still gonna rank it in this video. Let's talk about the actual highlighter though. This is really quite lovely. I really love the effect of this. Now in this swatch, you're probably gonna look at this and be like, Haley, that's a very icy highlighter. Didn't you just say that you did not like those? And it does look a little bit icy on the swatch. I don't know what it is, but when I use a brush with this, it is so pretty. It is just a very like, it's there and you can see it. It's more impactful than some of these like lower ranking highlighters, but it's not like icy in your face like some of those other, like the Ozone from Nabla. And I really enjoy this highlighter because as funny as it sounds, if I go to ham with another highlighter and I feel like I need to blend it out a little bit, I can dip into this one and I'm able to soften like the edges and make it work. So this is just a great workhorse highlighter in my opinion, like I'm able to soften and tone down other highlighters with it. It's really pretty to mix with other highlighters. It's really pretty on its own. I just can't stop using it. It's been a, like a favorite, you know what I mean? The only reason it's coming in basically at number six, like from six to one, it was just really hard to put these in a position. But like I said, I've been enjoying like my colored highlighters a little bit better, so that's why this one is coming in at six. All right, so now that we are in the top five, these are like the highlighters where I'm like, I cannot live without them. Like I really like them that much. If something happened to them, I would run right out and repurchase them, <laughs> like no questions asked. So my favorite peachy highlighter that I have, this one comes from Nabla too, but this is the shade Privilege. Hopefully you can see in there, like compared to how the ozone one looked, this one has a lot more wear and tear on it. Like I said, this is just a beautiful peachy shade. It almost has like a little bit of like a golden pink shift to it. I don't know, it's just a very interesting color. I think in the swatch it looks a little bit dark and it might look like, well, how do you make that work on your skin? Like, wouldn't that give you some type of cast? But it doesn't. Like these Nabla highlighters, I have to say, they really blend out very effortlessly. I don't feel like they accentuate texture. Um, sometimes I feel like even with the ABH ones or the Uden's Eye ones, if I go in too heavy handed and I'm having like a breakout or like just some type of texture on my face, it can really accentuate it. But, which I know, it's a highlighter, it's going to accentuate it. But my point is, is even if I have a little bit of texture on my cheeks and I go in with this novel one, I don't really feel like it gives that same, like it's making it really noticeable effect. So I just have greatly enjoyed this one. This was a highlighter I could not stop using in the tail end of 2021. Like I had to force myself to kind of like put it away for a while and rotate through some other things in my collection. All right, so we're gonna talk about the last shade that comes from the ABH Sugar Glow Kit. So this is the shade Starburst. If I hold it maybe like this, I hope that you guys can see this definitely out of the other, like all the shades from that palette, this one has the most use on it. This one has a pretty good dip in the middle, if I do say so myself. So this again is just another highlighter that I can't put down. It is a pink toned highlighter, but this one is not a straight up pink. This is like a very light pink mixed with a little bit of white, I would say, but it is still very pretty. I still really enjoy it. I do have it on today mixed with the Diamond Bond Powder from Natasha Denona. So it has just been a really like a favorite. Every time I pull out this palette, I tell myself like you're gonna use a different highlighter from this palette and then I end up dipping into this one anyway. So I would really love to just continue to use this, love it, and you know, maybe hit pan on it this year. Wouldn't that be fun? All right, so our fourth and third highlighters both come from the Uden's Eye palette. So wait, I'm saying that and I'm, no, I know, I know which way I ranked them. I'm getting like a little bit uh, nervous, but 
I cannot pronounce these shade names as you may have noticed. So I will leave them on the screen for you. But coming in at number four is this one right here. I don't know if you'll pick it up in camera. I'm sure you'll be able to tell more in the swatch, but this is a white based highlighter with a kind of blue shift to it. It is so pretty before this palette, like before this shade, I would have never went for a highlighter like that, but just, it was winter. It was like, you know, snowy and cold. And so I was like, let's just try it. Like this is matching like the, the, you know, the warmth of my heart right now. So I put it on and it was just so pretty. Like I really did just enjoy it. And one of my favorite things to do is to mix it with the, mix it with the pink shade here, soul. I just think that that makes such a pretty, almost like purple highlighter, but you can still like, if you move your face in the right way, you can still very much see like the pink and the blue individually. So I just have absolutely loved that combination. So that's a great segue into our number three highlighter, which would be the pink one, the soul shade. And I feel like if I hold the palette this way, you can definitely see in the corner there, there is a massive dip. It is no like, there's no hiding it. This shade has definitely gotten the most use from me out of this palette as a whole. And it's just, like I said, it's a pink highlighter. And for whatever reason, that is just what I'm really into right now, really drawn to. I can't get enough of them. I could wear a pink highlighter every day and not get tired of it. So if you were familiar with my highlighter collection, you probably know then what number one is. This was also gifted to me by Laura. She is the queen of highlighter. Go check her out, okay? She really does love a very intense highlighter. It always looks so nice on her, but she is really good at like picking out what highlighters you gonna like. So coming in at number one, this is the Pillow Talk Highlighter from Ofra. And I think you can tell we have a really nice sizable pan on this. I absolutely love this. This is my favorite pink highlighter. Obviously it's coming in at number one, but it is just, it's a good depth of pink. It is not too dark. It is not too light. It is not too icy. It just looks beautiful no matter what on its own mixed with other things. This I could just wear every day and not get tired of it whatsoever. I have just greatly enjoyed this. I really like the formula of it. I just really have no complaints about this highlighter whatsoever. And I'm so happy that she sent it my way. It was so thoughtful. And like I said, it's just become like my favorite, like tried and true highlighter. I, yeah, I would have no problems. Like I said, wearing it every day. But that wraps up ranking my highlighters. Let me know down below. Do, are you surprised by where I put any of them? Would you put some in like a different spot? Do you own any of these highlighters? Do we share a similar opinion or a different opinion? Like I just love chatting about makeup obviously and it's really fun to like chat with you guys in the comments and like see your opinions and how you think about things versus how I think about things and it's just, it's always a fun time so. That is it though, that's all I got for you. So I hope you're having a good day, a good night, or a good whatever, and I will just catch you guys in the next one. Bye.